Good morning, you guys. Welcome back. If you guys are new, I'm Caitlin. I thought it would be fun if I actually did a Q&A kind of segment on my channel. Let me know if you guys like this idea. But I was thinking I would do once a month, I would do like a fitness column and honestly just answer as many questions as I can in like 30 minutes. Just deep dive into questions that maybe I haven't deep dived on my YouTube channel before. I do have a podcast where I go definitely more in depth about certain topics, but I just wanna bring that to my YouTube channel in case any of you guys prefer to like watch a video. And I started doing Q and A's on my Instagram where I ask you guys to ask me fitness questions that you have just maybe that have come up that week or just that you have always wanted to be answered. So I'm gonna pull questions from there. I just did one like a week ago, so I saved some of them. The first one is, how can I stay motivated to work out when I'm not seeing immediate results? I feel like this one definitely hits home because when I first started my fitness journey, I think that was the main thing I was chasing was the result. And I think that's pretty typical. Obviously, when you first get started, something's motivating you. So whatever that end result is, whether it is to feel healthier, to be stronger, to lift more, to look a certain way, that's what all of our focus is on. But as a personal trainer, as someone who has gone through that before, I genuinely think that the way that I stay most motivated is to focus more on the actual habit that you're trying to achieve. So if this is the end result and you've set up these three things that you wanna do every single day to reach that end result, instead of always being focused on that result because results do take time and you're not gonna see progress in the gym, you know, whatever it is that you're searching for, every step of the way especially because when changes are made over time they're going to be smaller so it is going to be hard to just see and feel those changes as they come every single day whereas if you look back three months from now it might be a little bit easier to see those big changes but the day to day it's hard to remember that they are happening so what i focus on is the actual goals that i'm setting up being proud of myself and also giving myself grace which i'm sure we'll talk about today too but even just having a goal even just setting up a plan is more than most people can say so definitely give yourself applause for that but yeah i definitely have shifted my focus to like feeling and seeing the results to just being proud of myself for doing the actual steps to get to that okay the next thing is how do i start a fitness routine to get started i would say aside from setting that goal making sure that it's actually accountable and something that's really relatable to your lifestyle make sure that you're also taking account that you're at the starting point anytime i start something new i try not to jump into like the advanced version of that goal so for example if you've never set foot in the gym before Maybe making the goal to go five or six days a week, like you see maybe your favorite creator doing or someone in your life doing, that might not be the right choice for you because it might be hard to do that at the beginning. And that's just the reality of it. And we've all been at that point. When I saw my biggest fitness results and I felt the biggest change in my lifestyle, I was going to the gym one to three times a week. Sometimes it was once, sometimes it was twice maybe it was three times like definitely the most would be three times and i was just being a little bit more active throughout the day like standing up more i was working a retail job and i felt my absolute best and that's where i saw the biggest changes so don't feel like you have to do the hardest routine and like don't feel like you have to start up here you can absolutely start down here and still feel results so also write down those habits and things, the stepping stones that are gonna get you to that goal because I feel like when you see it and you can hold yourself accountable to, oh, am I actually checking this off? That can be really helpful. So things like maybe getting in more steps throughout the day, um, maybe going to that gym one or three times a week, staying hydrated throughout the day, maybe adding fruits and vegetables to every single meal, uh, make, making sure that you're satiated throughout the day and you're not skipping meals that sort of thing the next one is what should i eat before and after a workout so obviously i'm not a dietitian i'm not somebody that gives nutrition advice for me i love to fuel before a workout so i want to give some examples of like my favorite pre and post workouts just to inspire you if you are kind of in like a rut of not knowing what sounds good i've definitely been at that point i love seeing just like the easy quick snacks because it's not every single day where i have time to like make the breakfast bars that i made last week but I will start with that one because I did meal prep them. So every single day it was really easy to eat them. It was just that like first initial day of making them that took a little bit longer. It took me about like 10 minutes to make the batter and then they did cook for like 35 minutes. So I've made two renditions of these bars. I did a salted caramel and then I also did an apple spice. 
Both were so good. Honestly, I feel like I would say the salted caramel ones were my favorite because I did chocolate chips with those, but I want to do pumpkin next. So I'll put the batter on the screen of what I did and I'll also link the TikTok down below. But they were so easy to make and I feel like prepping a pre-workout is the best thing to do because I just like run out the door in the morning. I'll like make my coffee and I'll go to my workout, especially sometimes like I'll go to spin at 6 a.m. There's no way I'm gonna like sit there and like cut up a banana, toast some bread, put almond butter on it. So having something that has fast digesting carbs in it that I can just grab that fills me up enough, but also doesn't feel like super heavy in my stomach and can digest before my workout while I like drive there. That's my favorite type of pre-workout. So definitely recommend trying those. If I am just running out the door, maybe sometimes it is just a banana and peanut butter, but to spruce it up a little bit, sometimes I'll put almond butter or peanut butter in a bag the night before, shake some cinnamon in there. Even sometimes I'll do maple syrup and just kind of like mix it together in the bag. And then in the morning, you pull off a corner of the bag and you can squeeze it onto a banana or apple. I love doing that. Um, and then some of my favorite bars are actually the Truvani only bars. I'll put them on the screen I really like those before a workout and then after a workout like if I'm driving home from the gym before I make an actual proper meal I'll like some on-the-go snacks. I love our chopsticks. I love hard-boiled eggs right now I don't know why I'm like going through a phase of being obsessed with them Greek yogurt protein drinks are really yummy for me just like really simple and easy snacks like I don't like to overthink like my pre and post workout because I already cook a lot for my three meals for the day, I just like try to do something quick that fuels me. You really, really don't have to overcomplicate it. How often should I work out each week? The reason I wanted to answer this one is because I talk about how customized fitness is to everybody and I always recommend if you ever sign up at a gym and they give you like a free assessment with a trainer, 1000% take advantage of that. You don't have to sign up for a trainer, but if you ever get the chance to work one-on-one -on -one in person with someone, I highly recommend it because in person is going to be the best thing that you can do. When you're one-on-one -on -one with a trainer and you're at an assessment, they're asking you for all of your pre-existing history with fitness. They're asking you what your routine is right now. They're asking you about injuries. They're actually testing your abilities and your fitness level. And sometimes if it is that initial time you're at the gym, you might start with doing a wall squat instead of a back squat. Or maybe you put a box below you so that if you are doing a squat, you need that assistant to sit on the box first and then get yourself up. Or maybe if someone has a little bit more experience in the gym and they've already done squats by themselves before, maybe they can start with the body weight squats and then work their way up to adding weight quickly. You know, everybody's gonna progress at a different level for how many times a week it is recommended to get 150 minutes of cardio exercise every single week outside of lifting. So that doesn't just mean running or going to a spin class. You could walk on the treadmill, you can do the stair stepper, you could do plyometric exercises like jump squats or burpees or walking lunges, anything that is increasing your heart rate. And then something that's always been super important to me is building muscle. So if I was to start lifting, even just being able to go that one time a week and then working your way up to the two or three times a week. Again, don't feel like you have to start off at the three times a week and like go push pull legs every single week. Like that is a lot. And it's even a lot for me and I've been working out for 10 years. So start with whatever you feel comfortable with on top of the 150 minutes of cardio. As somebody that's been going to the gym for a while, what are some types of exercises I should include into my routine? This is a good question because not everybody is a beginner and maybe you feel like you've progressed in the gym and maybe you're getting maybe stagnant with your results or you're feeling just like bored with your workouts. If you ever feel like you want to take it up a notch and you've already kind of started at that square one position, the easiest way that I understood lifting and building a balance routine was focusing on push pull and legs and when i first heard this i was like i'm so so confused like i don't know what push and pull is why is there like more terms to add to fitness so when you hear push you want to think of any exercise that's pushing away from your body so if i'm doing a chest press the weight's being pushed away whereas if i'm doing a lat pull down i'm pulling the weight to my body so on a push day, every single exercise that you're doing is going to either target shoulders, chest, or tries. And then on a pull day, every single exercise that you do that's pull is going to target your back or biceps. So biceps, you're pulling the weight towards your body. If that's hard to understand, because at the beginning it was very hard, like I would do an exercise and be like, wait, am I pushing or pulling it? Just know that the push is shoulders, chest, and tries, and then pull days is back and bys. 
So when you think about it like that, you just want to rotate and be hitting all of the muscles in your body just to create a balanced workout routine. So if we were only exercising our legs, we could create imbalances and vice versa. If I was only working my biceps, triceps are going to be underactive. So you want to make sure that you have balance in your workout routine so that you are focusing on building muscle overall rather than just in one specific area. If you're super advanced and you are going to the gym multiple times a week and maybe building your glutes is something that you're really, really passionate about and that's your biggest goal, you can still do push-pull legs and then maybe add another leg day or you work your way up to doing three leg days a week if that's something that is in your realm of fitness level. But even those girls who are really working towards those glutes, they're still gonna be doing those push-pull exercises because they're gonna have that balance routine and maybe even if you're not seeing it online, I promise you it's behind online or at least it should be. And then like I mentioned, I also focus on adding the 150 minutes of cardio. And then I'm always also working on flexibility and balance and throwing that into my routine, even if it's just one balance exercise a week. Like maybe I'm doing step ups on the box. That's gonna take a lot of core strength, a lot of balance, stretching. I'm stretching before and after every single workout. I do dynamic stretching before workout and then static stretching for after workouts. Okay, this one I love. How do I stay motivated to work out specifically regularly? For this one, the two things that are coming to mind to me is self-commitment and enjoyment. So for self-commitment, something that has really, really helped me in all of my wellness goals, so from going to the gym to cooking for myself and teaching myself about nutrition and holding myself accountable to those goals, it started in a very smaller space. So even just when you tell yourself you're gonna do something like, oh, I'm gonna go clean my room tonight, are you actually following through with it? Because it is so easy obviously not to like we're always like oh i want to get this done and this done and this done but i've learned that even just on like the daily basis where i'm setting myself up a to-do list for the day i'm trying to be realistic with it because i want to actually follow through with the things that i'm saying i'm doing because then you're almost practicing self-commitment and it's teaching yourself that you trust yourself it's teaching yourself that if i say something i'm gonna get it done and it's like any other habit Honestly, self-commitment in itself is a habit. And like any other habit, you have to start small and then work your way up and it just becomes easier. So also, if you are in those beginning stages where you're trying to get to the gym and trying to teach yourself that self-commitment, be so easy on yourself because not everything happens like that. And I personally feel like the worst thing that we can do when we are working on self-commitment is to like belittle ourselves and feel negative about not reaching the goal because you're already knocking yourself down when you already feel like you're at a vulnerable spot. So you just really, really want to focus on building yourself up when you are working on self-commitment. Always be in your own corner, recognizing when you are falling through, not having a negative lens when you aren't falling through, not being like, oh, I knew it, I shouldn't have said that, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have done that. Life is not that serious and there's 15 times throughout the day where I say I'm gonna do something and I don't do it. So it's just like the majority of things, try to show yourself and prove to yourself that you're gonna actually get whatever it is that you wanna get done to be done, which is also why I'm very realistic with the goals that I set and to-do lists and things like that. Life is so short and I've just learned like self-love is the most important thing. And then on top of it, like I said, you really wanna enjoy your workout routine. Don't stop until you find exercise and movement that you love because I promise you, you will find something out there that is healthy for your body that you genuinely love. It might just be walking and listening to a podcast. It might be walking with a friend. It might be walking to a coffee in the morning. It might be going to a spin class. It might be going to aerial yoga. It might be biking. It might be hiking. It might be lifting. It might be Pilates. It might be yoga. It might be hot Pilates. It might be hot yoga. It might be Legree. It might be soul cycle it might be a specific gym it might be a specific coach it might be a specific trainer a specific workout guide on the internet someone who you like to follow on the internet and they really motivate you so you like doing very specific workouts it might be watching a form video at home and doing an exercise or a youtube video like there's so many forms of healthy exercise and i promise if you try as many as you can you will find the one that you love and then once you find that exercise that you love you'll be surprised how easy it is to motivate yourself to get to something that you love rather than get yourself to something that you hate. And if it is something that's important to you, like lifting, you really do want to build muscle, but you don't love it that much, try to find something that you can add on to it that you do love. Maybe you love a smoothie that you love to get after your workout, and after you do your workout, go and get that smoothie. Treat yourself to it. 
anything that can get you there and get you excited about it. It doesn't have to be the actual workout. Like I said, maybe it's the post-workout smoothie or maybe you love fashion and you love buying new workout sets. Maybe treat yourself to a workout set and wear it to the gym or something that's free. Maybe you love listening to podcasts. So maybe when you do go to the gym and you walk on the treadmill, maybe that's your time to listen to a podcast. Or maybe you love going getting coffee out. Maybe get the coffee on the way to the gym, listen to your favorite music on the way to the gym, watch your favorite YouTuber and pump yourself up before you go to the gym, you know? Just find things that you can add that you really, really enjoy and I think it'll help with the like enthusiasm and motivation with working out. I'm not really sure how to track my progress, specifically knowing that you don't focus on body image. So if you guys are new to my channel, I've opened up about body image countless times. It's honestly why I started my page because I wanted to show the side to fitness that wasn't body related because for me personally, having a goal for something towards my body just became very negative very fast for me. And I feel like it's something I'll still struggle with probably for the rest of my life because we have society standards and I'm filming myself all the time. And it's just something I always have to remind myself that I genuinely love myself, I love my body, and I'm doing what's right for my body no matter what it looks like. I've always said that, yes, that can be negative to me, but I'm not saying that in a general sense. I'm not saying that nobody should have this goal or this goal. Well, who am I to say what your goal should be? I'm not a doctor, I'm not a dietitian. I'm just a personal trainer, and I'm someone who is super, super passionate about exercise science, and I also know my own routine. And I know my own fitness journey and I know what hasn't worked for me in the past and the motivation that I felt behind the body image goals never got me to my goal but the motivation behind actually feeling a certain way and trying to be the healthiest version of myself prevent injury prevent disease be stronger build muscle those are things that actually get me in the gym and make me feel positive on the daily so the ways that i personally track progress is all performance based so i progressively lift in the gym so i'm increasing my weight when i can making sure the last two reps of every single set is difficult so as you continue to progress those last two reps are going to get easier and when they do get easier i'm either increasing the weight or i'm increasing the time under tension or I'm also increasing the amount of reps that I'm doing kind of just depends on to what I'm in the mood for so for example if I'm at the gym and I'm doing hip thrust to start my leg day I know what weight works for me and I know what weight is pushing my limits without possibly creating an injury or pushing myself too hard so I'll start with that weight and then in the gym maybe it'll take four weeks to progress um, but I'm just paying attention to it and then when I do feel like I can progress I go really slow so I'll either add five pound plates or ten pound plates and if I can't get to that last rep I'm totally fine with going back and grabbing the initial weight because the last thing I want is an injury but those are definitely ways I don't personally take like before and after photos I don't pay attention to my body I don't pay attention to my weight that is just something specifically to me like I said that does not help me with my motivation the camera cut me off because the battery is dying so I'm gonna take that as my sign that that's where I'm gonna end today. And I just wanted to kind of start with the basics so I can keep deep diving in every single episode of this series of fitness advice. But before we go, I did wanna say a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, which is Squarespace. You guys know I've been using Squarespace for a long time for my business. And if you guys didn't know, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that helps you build, design, and create a website. Not only did I sell my first gym guide on Squarespace, but I also have sold merch on there. And it's also somewhere that I link all my social channels. I will link my website down below so you guys can see it. Squarespace is an amazing place to start because it's so beginner friendly. They give you templates to choose from and then you can go in and choose the colorway. You can add a comment section, a newsletter. If you guys want to see the behind the scenes, you want to go through the analytics, everything is given to you and it's such a great investment for your business. It only took me one day to set up my Squarespace website and I've been using it for years. So 1000% worth it. And they also gave me a code that you guys can try out if you want a free trial and you also want 10% off when you are ready to purchase a domain or website. You guys can go to squarespace.com slash Nolan and you'll get that offer. So I just want to say again, thank you Squarespace for sponsoring today's video and I will see you guys in the next vlog. Bye.